All right, let's get started. It's 6.08 p.m. by my watch, so we've got Hammond, um, Alex, me, Christine. And also attending are John C and Corey mm -hmm. C. Okay. And with Cecily. Oh, what happened to Cecily? She was here a minute ago. Yeah. Huh. Well, I'll put her down. If she doesn't come back, I'll take her off. Okay. Yeah, she left her briefcase here, so I think yes. she'll uh, be back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um we all know each other you know Corey no yeah, I, I don't think I know yeah you. so I'm Corin Clark I'm from um student health and wellness at UConn and I'm involved with bicycle advocacy on campus oh, so you're employed by UConn yeah, yeah. okay and I went ex, right. ex UConn employee <laughs> okay right okay. right and Corey helped us uh with some of the work on the bicycle pedestrian plan and that's that's why she's here in case mm -hmm. There are questions that come up. Um, so we'll we'll forego the uh, approval of the minutes. That that I know takes quorum. Uh, under older business, I did talk with Philip Johnson of WRTD today to get the latest, and here's what he said. Um, they went to fares now. You know, it used to be fare free, mm -hmm. uh, but the money that was making that happen from the state is gone. So now they're charging uh, fares. And the fares are the city buses, which are stores and Willimantic, $1.25 a ride. The commuter buses, which are the ones that go to Norwich, Foxwoods, and Danielson are $2.75 a ride. Um, they also have a monthly pass for $40. It allows you to ride anything. Either one. Either one. Yeah. And they have what's called a token uh, pass where you get charged by the individual ride on your phone. It's a code that you put on your phone when you get in on the bus. And the cap is $40 a month. So if you don't get to the $40 a month, it charges you per ride. And if you go over $40 a month, it stops you at $40. So a lot of people do that. Go card, isn't it called a go card? Yeah, a go card. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the new routes that we talked about at previous meetings have been delayed by DOT. And he said, now the delay is looking like it's dissolving and they hope to go on to the new routes sometime this summer. So that's, that's it from the uh, public transit point of view. So then under old business, um, we had talked about complete streets. We, I had put together a rating system using a spreadsheet and some rating factors. We discussed those factors and we changed them a little bit. And we recalculated everything based on the rating scales. And we came up with a ranking of uh, 17 road segments in town. And then we talked about them a little bit. And um, there were a few kind of interesting recommendations that we came up with, but we didn't actually vote to say we wanted to do this because we what we said was we wanted to send this to the town staff and let them react to it before we did anything. And so <laughs> Derek is on vacation, so I don't know if uh, you or if he or John has had a chance to look into this at all. No, other than just the meeting, we've looked at it. And... Okay, all right. But we're supportive of it. Yeah, so I guess the 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 things that we came up with, you know, were that uh, the Spring Hill Road section in front of the middle school and Maple Road, those are all very good, very good uh, uh, high ranking things. So was Hunting Lodge Road with the cabot that it needs some traffic calming. So was South Eagleville Road with the same 
caveat that it would need uh, uh, some traffic calming, which it looks like is ha going to happen through some boulevarding and possibly some roundabouting and things like that. And then there was a piece of dog lane between uh, Jefferson Fries and 195 that could be uh, altered a little bit to be uh, a, a complete street, uh, possibly even uh, not, a, not used as an entrance and exit in that area. That would need some study. And then uh, my personal favorite was trying to see if we could work reverse angle parking on Wilbur Cross Way, which would make it a little safer for bicycles because the sidewalks uh, aren't, don't, aren't really set up for bicycling there. It's a nice wide sidewalk, so you can ride on the sidewalk, but most people ride their bikes out on the road. So those were some of the things that we talked about. And I guess I'm interested in if, you know, uh, either Alex or Herman, uh, Hermet, saying that right? No, I, Haymont. Haymont. <laughs> Haymont. He's been on the committee for five years and I still can't pronounce his name. My apologies. And Christine, do you have any suggestions or, in, or, or other things that you'd like to bring up about this or, or do you want to just say to the town staff, you know, we generally support this and, uh, you know, please consider it and get back to us. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds good. Christine? I mean, I'd be in support of something specific to like either picking one of those as our top recommendation or, you know, saying we hope that the, the town does a complete street project in the next year or three or I don't know what would be a reasonable mm -hmm. time frame for that. But Well, they are working on the Maple Road design. And that's going to yep. have a uh, you know a separate walking and biking path, multi-use path, and that's supposed to connect uh, from separatist uh, from uh, South Eagleville all the way to the middle school, right, John? That is correct. And also, we're working on South Eagleville with the Community Challenge Grant, so that's will take you from the intersection with 195 down to Maple. Right. So those two are going to happen. Of course, it's other people's money involved in it, so it slows it down. It's not just the town doing it. So, right. You know, Ma Maple's already taken longer than I wanted to, but it's going to take another year or two. I have a feeling. Would like ranking those um, couple of projects you mentioned, Juan, make sense then? You know, saying. Our committee, you know, recommends this be the next next project, for example, and followed by these ones or something to that effect. I'm not opposed to a vague one, but I feel like vague is everyone supports complete streets in that way. Right. Right. But I think the plan that we were talking about last time had sort of a ranking to it, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there was a ranking by rating scores, and uh, that was one of the slides of our PowerPoint presentation. Um, if you want, I can, I have that on this thumb drive. I can run it. That John, are you remote or are you here? You're muted. I think you're muted. Uh, sorry, I'm at home, Lon. I, okay. I can check my thumb drive if it has it on it. But. No, it doesn't. I, I, I don't think so, because this, this was the revision. I don't know if we... It's, it's, it's a, it has to have a January 2nd date on it, because the first one was in December. So this would have been done January 2nd. No, I don't have that. Yeah, okay. So, but, but if you go behind the TV on the... Uh, Left side is the little computer hard drive. So the opposite side you're sitting. You was it something you shared with us in minutes yeah. or something? It was a PowerPoint presentation that we did last time, but one of the slides has that ranking in it. Right. I just other, I thought you sent it to us. I just thought maybe I could find it. Yeah, other side, other Lon. 
like I support that ranking that we talked about, but I, I just figure for our motion that's an unofficial motion because we don't have a quorum. You know, I, say. I have the list of them ranked. So in this box here, John. Yeah, it's about the size of an old cable box. Yeah. Right. In. Then if you use the mouse over there to get to the no, the mouse. That's a TV, the mouse. Right, let's see what we can do here. Oh, okay. Uh, which one is the revised revision one? Complete speech revision one. That's the one. Then you got to share your screen. Down at the bottom of the zoom in green. Go to Zoom. That one? Second. You no, know, the next one, the blue, the full blue dot right yeah. there. Hit that so we can get to Zoom again. And then we'll, um, uh, yeah, click it for a minute, the meeting, and then share screen. That okay. green. That green, right that yeah. green box. Yeah. And, and then, so this yep. is, is this the one? That looks like the one to me. Oh, no, complete streets on the left. This one. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's got to be revision one, though. Yep. That's it. Yeah, okay. yeah. So click on that. Yep. Double click. Double click. And now you can go. Okay. So now I can just go down and get and get the. Uh... So these were the 17 roads that we used. Double click. Okay. And this was the rankings that we came out after we revised our um, after we revised our uh, criteria, we revised a couple of things. So the number in parentheses is the ranking uh, score. And the number here is the actual rank. And so Spring Hill Road came out in front of the middle school came out number one, and that's already in the Maple Road project. Yes. Hunting Lodge Road came out number two because of the, the high traffic. Mm -hmm. I mean, pedestrian and bicycle traffic yeah. that came out number two. But the quali qualification with that is that there's still some pretty fast traffic on there. Mm -hmm. Next was South Eagleville Road. That's in the Community Challenge Grant. The next was Dog Lane, which is that the section, just that very first section between 195 and uh, Rice Circle. Okay. Next was Bolton Road Extension. Um, that one's difficult because there, that's the main entrance into, into the store center area, mm -hmm. particularly if you do something with Dog Lane. And then Route 44 and 195 northwest of Four Corners, um, again, with some traffic calming, but they're talking about having sidewalks and bike lanes leading around the corner and down 44 in to, to sandwich the new development that's happening. And then Maple Road, we talked about Route 195, from North Eagleville to 44, to, uh, that's to Four Corners. Um, that one depends on uh, funding, of course. A lot of these do. And then Route 89 to the Mansfield Elementary School, Wilbur Cross Way, Rice Circle, and so on. So that's the ranking that we had. So is there is there a suggestion as to how we phrase that? If we so want to. The first two are currently underway, or was South Eagleville also currently in the project? South Eagleville is in the project. Yeah. Spring Hill Road is in the project, but Hunting Lodge Road is not. Okay. So, I mean, my, 
my recommendation would be to start with hunting lodge and then maybe make the next three or four on this list specific recommendations to the town council. That's just my, my thought. Okay, well, um, the way I feel about it is there are a couple of them that are a little easier to do, sort of the low hanging fruit, if you'll pardon the expression, um, because there's not a lot of physical changes you would have to make if you made a uh, dog lane um, either one way or restricted access in some fashion. And if you took Wilbur Crossway and did reverse angle parking. So I hate to focus in on something like Hunting Lodge Road because that would be, yes, it, it's, a, it's, it's a good project, but it would require some serious uh, traffic calming. But that's okay too. <laughs> I, I, hate, I hate to throw out a couple of these easy ones for the higher ranking, even though the higher ranking ones um, are higher ranked. So I don't know. Hey, Matt, Christine, that makes I, sense. what would you like to do? But isn't our recommendation just to have the town um, evaluate it, the staff evaluate the different options, or is our recommendation to have the council implement it. I thought that we were, or which way are we going? Well, I prefer the first one because as John said, they didn't really have a chance to dig into this. So for us to go directly to the council with this recommendation means that the staff is still flapping in the breeze. So I, I prefer sending this to them formally saying, we, we like this idea. We'd like to see some complete streets come out of this. We'll take it up at our next meeting and we'd like to hear from you to John and his staff. That makes sense. I think we already voted to, to do that, right? In our last meeting? I don't think we voted. I think we said, we'll hold off until they react to it. I, I, I've checked the minutes. Yeah, we, we were supposed to get back to Elon in the one paragraph there. It says rather than it decided to refer it to the DPW staff for review and comment and take it up again. To, so we didn't actually vote. We just said we wanted to refer it to them. And we're okay. So like I said, let's, time, we're okay. let's vote. <laughs> let's vote to refer it to them. And that, that makes it, uh, we'll put that in the minutes. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to vote to refer this to uh, the DPW staff. Second. Well, I entertain the motion, so you got to make the motion. Okay. And then, so Hemant will make the motion. Thank you. Second, either Alex or um, Christine. I can second that. Okay, all those in favor, aye. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Asked you now, mostly. Thank you for your patience in that. Okay. So, if you say stop okay. sharing screen. We can pull up next line if you want. Again, it's room like, yeah. Right here? Yep, that one. Um, and double click that. And then up there, you are sharing screen, stop sharing. Is that yeah. red button? Yeah. Okay, we're back. Then again, green probably. Oh no, that's to share it again. Okay. Do you want your uh, briefing up, Lon? Or? Yeah, we're, uh, the next thing on the um, on the meeting agenda is 
the uh, bicycle pedestrian plan, and I did revise a uh, a PowerPoint. Do we have to share screen again for this, or you can do that? I can do it. Do you see it? All right. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to get to. See, there we go. All right, so I can qu quickly go through this. Hopefully, you've had an opportunity to at least look at the plan. The link was in the last agenda, so you have some idea what it is. But the, um, the plan starts off with uh, the reason why we have a plan is because it was called for in the plan of conservation and development. And um, and, and it also ties in with our complete streets advocacy and policy, the town's complete street advocacy and policy. And we have said to the League of American Bicyclists that the town does have a plan in the works. And the next two slides show exactly where the Mansfield Tomorrow Plan says you know, that we're supposed to have a bicycle pedestrian plan. That's right. At, and the next one lists some of the priority projects that are in the plan, which we incorporated in our plan, in the plan in the draft, and also the criteria for adding bikeway and walkway projects uh, or the process for doing that. And so we're, we're in our recommendations, we don't, uh, or we, we suggest those be continued, of course. So the first, the, what the plan does, it's called, the plan title is called Connections. And what it does is it looks at the destinations in Mansfield and how they should be connected together from uh, an active transportation point of view. So this first map is the map of, uh, the multi-use paths and the bike routes in town. And that, if you've seen the plan and or the routes, you know, we've got bike routes that go north-south. We've got bike routes that go a little bit east-west, but there isn't too much that goes way east-west. The next map talks about the sidewalks and trails. Okay, so again, we. We the first map was the bike stuff and the multi-use stuff. This then is the trails and um, sidewalks, and there are lots of trails in the town, not so many sidewalks. Um, and so part of the plan recommendations, and we'll get to those, is to fill in some of the gaps on the sidewalks. So then. We organized the projects by destinations, and the destinations were civic properties, active recreation areas, resort preserve areas, commercial districts, both. So we, we organized them in terms of projects between destinations and projects within destinations. Okay, so <clears throat> we then list, we have a list of some of them. Go ahead. Next slide. Okay, so this map, uh, it's going to be hard to follow the map, but the map shows um, the destinations in the town. Um, can I go back one, John? I'll just point out. These are, these are the dots. The red dots are the commercial areas. The dark green dots are the schools and active recreation areas. And the light green dots are the uh, preserves and more, more passive recreation. Okay, so then the connections, the plan looks at connections between the areas. And that's what this, this slide talks about. So we've been talking about some of those things. We are specifically talking about the bike uh, pedestrian. Bikes and pedestrians. Okay. Okay, and so the connections between destination areas. Oh, by the way, 
This was reviewed by the and endorsed by the Park and Natural Resources Committee at their last meeting. And they had some suggestions that we haven't incorporated yet. One of the suggestions was to include the Eastern ball field facility as a destination. So that will be added to the maps and, and, and to, uh, to the list of destinations because there's a table of destinations and Eastern ball fields was left out, we'll put it in. Anyway, so some of the, some of the projects, if you, if you read along, the, um, we organized those by areas. So the first two projects listed to here are the East Brick Mall area to Mansfield Center and Southern Mansfield to the Wyndham Town Line. And those include a sidewalk on Stores Road from Bassus Bridge to the East Brick Mall area. There's no connection there for sidewalk. And walkways on Pleasant Valley Road and Mansfield Avenue to get from the southern end of town into Wyndham. Then there are some several projects in downtown in the downtown area to connect the downtown area to Four Corners. Is this Pleasant Valley Road is the one which I don't see his connection to Mansfield. I, is it? It goes from the Mansfield into. Well, um, from downtown stores. Is it a parallel to turn this Pleasant Valley? Maybe you could go back to the map and we could look at the maybe on the map. Well, there is a whole list of projects. This is just by by area here. Let's see if I don't answer your question, then we can go back. Okay. So in the downtown stores area, not within the destination, but between it and Four Corners, between it and Eagleville, and between it and the depot campus, there are several projects, mm -hmm. okay? And then the downtown stores to connect to the middle, to the middle school includes the trail on Maple Road, the multi-use path, and an off-road trail between Birchwood Heights and Monticello Road, which has there's a, a separate right of way in there that would connect those two mm -hmm. areas. And then finally, the whole crosstown east-west uh, again connects across the town, Coventry to Ashford on Route 44 and Dog Lane, Gurley Road, Mount Hood Road and Route 89 out to the Ashford town line. So those are all, those are the connections between areas. So the next slide is the connections within destination areas. We tried to, you know, these are projects within an area. So for example, in Southern Mansfield, there are walkway gaps on Connorville Road, Pollock Road, Meadowbrook Lane, and North Frontage Road. Some of those have partial sidewalks on them, like North Frontage Road has a sidewalk on part of it, but it doesn't do the whole road. The same with Connorville, the same with Pollock. Well, there's none on Pollock and uh, Meadowbrook Lane and the North Frontage Road. So there are gaps. So the plan says we should close the gaps in that area by making more walkways. In Mansfield Center, it suggests that they go ahead and pave the existing stone dust uh, walkway on both sides of 195. If you haven't walked down there lately, you might not find the path because it tends to grow up and 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 get weeds and stuff and so if it if it could be paved it would be uh, more more utilized and then in the four corners area we have the front door project from stores road 195 from route 44 or excuse me from route 44 up to timber drive and again that's that in the four corners area that's the section that goes around and uh, the new development but that's within the Four Corners area. And then also Birch Road, there's a short extension that could happen from the, the uh, multi-use path to the Goodwin School Building, depending on what it gets used for. If it's still being used for a municipal use, it'd be a very short connection from basically the roundabout at uh, Birch and, and Hunting Lodge or yeah, the Birch and Hunting Lodge to um, to the school building. 
And then there are several connections within the downtown stores destination area. South Eagle Road, we talked about um, the multi-use path from Maple to Separatist. Uh, Hunting Lodge Road, there's a gap uh, in the from North Eagleville to Separist that's already, that's funded, right, John? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, Route 195 uh, from the Liberty Bank Plaza to Birchwood Heights, short, another short section of extending the path that goes right now to Liberty Bank Plaza, but doesn't go all the way to Birchwood Heights. If it went all the way to Birchwood Heights, then you could go to Birchwood Heights, you'd go across Birchwood Heights, cut over to Monticello Lane to get to get to Davis Road, which is now a, a, a bike, already a bike route. Okay. Um, and then Westwood and Hillside Road, there's a walkway on uh, Eastwood, but there isn't one on Westwood. So we're calling for one on Westwood. And finally, that Monticello Birchwood Heights off road connection. Okay, so that means those are shown on the map. And uh, what we just talked about by color coding as to the kind of connection that it's going to be or that it's recommended to be. And then the next map is. Oh, this is, the this gaps. is a, a map that shows projects that are either funded or close to being funded. We thought that would be, uh, that was somebody, somebody asked for that in one of the review sessions that we had. And so that's what this, this map does. What, what is the significance of color coding? Okay, well, I don't have a color copy. And so how, how do I move these? I can, uh, I can read it. Pictures. Uh, green, green is in progress funded. Red is close to being funded. Okay. Blue is near term planned and orange is long term planned. Yeah. So near term, near term. Oh, yeah. Near term, that connection between Monticello and Birchwood Heights. Near term, the little connection to the school building. Right. And, uh, Close to being funded because it at one time it was in the infrastructure congressional uh, bipartisan thing, but it hasn't stayed in it. So they're still trying to get that. And uh, orange is long term. Okay. okay. So then <clears throat> next slide is the plan projects, and we've already been through those. We just went through them. This gives you projects by whether they're, whether it's a multi-use path, whether it's a walkway, or whether it's a bike route. And the, those we have, we have already talked about that, but there are, the, this is in the plan, the detailed suggestions. So the near-term recommendations, we can skip right to the last two slides here, are to continue to funded and partially funded projects which we've talked about, Maple Road, 275, and the Hunting Lodge Connector. Lon, sorry, can I just add, but is there some stipulation in there? Because I, I don't know why we would need something to go to Goodwin School right now, because it, I mean. Yeah, the plan says, depending on what the school is used for. Okay, there's a caveat there. Okay. And then um, the other recommendations near term were that the town repaint the sharrows and maintain the bike route signs, some of which need work. That they budget for walkway and bikeway maintenance, i.e. active transportation. That they market, pu publicize and encourage walking and biking and establish and fill an active transportation coordinator position. Then the longer term recommendations are somewhat similar. The plan suggests that the sidewalk bikeway planning coordination be assigned to a particular staff member. 
rather than a committee or whatever, that they establish active transportation line items in both the DPW and recreation budgets, that they continue to pursue state and federal grants for active transportation, they establish a hands-on bicycle education program for the fourth grade PE classes, um, which we're now raising money for at Bike Mansfield. And then in concert with the resident state troopers office, establish a permanent strategy for education enforcement for active transportation. Continue to give public information on safe driving in a bicycle friendly community. These are all recommendations for the town. Restart the bicycling workshops at the Mansfield Community Center. Those were going for a while and then COVID kind of shut them down. So we need to get them restarted. Here's a good one. Save as many trees as possible in the design of new multi-use pathways along roadways, especially the town scenic roads. <laughs> I mean, for example, we've talked about connecting on Spring Hill Road to that's not in the plan, but we've talked about the need for a connection between Mansfield City Road and the middle school. And so this recommendation says, if you're going to do pathways along the, tree, along the roadways, don't cut all the trees down. And then continue with the plan of conservation development recommended process for adding town bike routes and, and sidewalk and uh, walk. So that's kind of the plan. The way it works, I encourage you to look through it. The things that need to be modified by virtue of the uh, planning committee, the Natural Resources Committee, uh, they wanted more information in the plan about that connection between Monticello and uh, Birchwood Heights, because there are a couple of different routes in there. Um, so that that's one. Also, the plan said says right now that the mountain biking permission that was temporarily given uh, on a couple of the new, a uh, couple of the parks that previously were off limits to mountain bikes, that that should be finalized. What the Parks and Natural Resources Committee said is, not that it should be finalized, but it should be fully evaluated. And there's a distinction there. So we will we will use their language instead of instead of the one that we came up with, that it has to be fully evaluated. Um, what else? One other thing. Oh, the Eastern ball fields need to be added as a destination. Yeah, okay. The other it's those were basically the three mountain biking recommendation, the uh adding the eastern ball fields, and the Monticello connection. So I'm happy to take questions. I've been doing an awful lot of talking, so maybe someone else can talk for a while. <laughs> I think that's great. Well, thank you for pulling that all together. Well, as I said to Mike Taylor, who couldn't be here today, that, you know, there's nothing really earth shaking about it. It just kind of says we need some of these connections and we need to elevate you know, the uh, planning and coordination for biking and walking a little bit in the town's budget and in their personnel. And so, you know, that that's not really earth shaking. <laughs> All right, well, can we then take a, as we said, an endorsement vote, even though we don't have a quorum? I support that. <laughs> Okay, we'll take that as a motion from Alex. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you want a second? Second. We're going to hand it, hand it second. All those in favor, eyes, raise your hand. 
I don't see your hand, Christine. Are you? Yeah, in? I support it. Okay. <laughs> the computer says you're about to raise your hand. Your hand is raised. Thanks, yeah, artificial I, intelligence. Oh, I see that. She had an electronic hand. I'm <laughs> doing hand. There it is. <laughs> okay. Any updates on transportation projects, John? Uh, we're still working on Maple Road, Complete Street. You know, that's uh goes through DOT, but we are approved for both lots of uh, requests. So that's gonna that's gonna happen all the way to the middle school. We're working on the uh downtown loop connection, which is the piece on 275 between Maple and Separatist and the piece on Hunting Lodge Road between Separatist and North Eagleville. Those are, that's in the works. Unfortunately, one staff member's out, so it's kind of slowing that down, but we have a plan to work around that. Uh, we're currently working on Davis, Monticello and Felon for getting ready to pave that uh, this June and also uh, we started work on Timber and Thomas and Sumner, and we'll be doing Mulberry and Olson. And oh, that we did ask for Congressman Courtney again to do the uh, walkway from 190 on 195 from the basically the new Yukon sign down to Four Corners, and that made it through the second. This is the third time we've asked, and it made it through. So we're one of 15 projects going forward, and they. They always give you the rah rah that it looks good, but we'll see what happens. You don't mean walkway, you mean multi use path. Multi use right? path, yes, multi use path. Okay, that'd be great. Should we write our Should we write our congressman and say we need this? <laughs> <laughs> sure. And he'll say, I'm working on it, and they'll blame somebody else when we don't get it. But, <laughs> but that's, that's the game they all have to play. Yeah, understood. Well, nothing personal, just. I think I have his email address. I'll I'll send him something. Say our transportation advisory committee is very interested in that, and it's in our plan. Yes, we don't want any national champions walking on the road and getting hit. So we want them to be safe biking <laughs> and walking from four corners. Right. Okay. So moving ahead, then on active transportation updates. Um, we had come up, we had a little subcommittee meeting that came up with those value statements that we wanted to put in front of the town and the university administrations to get them started coordinating bicycle and uh, planning in, in between them. Um, we weren't sure which committee would be best to uh, go forward with those. So we're still kind of waiting for word either from Derek and John, or from um, Margaret Chady, we talked to as to what vehicle would be best, what committee or what organization would be best to get this process started. So uh, Derek's out. Uh, John, have you heard anything or do you know anything about that? No, I have not heard anything. All right. Well, I had asked both Derek and Margaret Chady, who's the town's uh, social media director or communications, communications specialist. Communications specialist, okay. I had asked both of them if they could, um, you know, chase that down a little bit to, to tell us who we should be talking to or who we should send these uh, value statements to to get them started with the coordination between the town and uh, Yukon. So that still yet to be decided. Assuming they come up with a committee, then what we'll, like if it's the community relations committee, then we'll get the chairman and we'll send that to them and try to see if we can come to one of their meetings to get them started on that. So that's what's going on. And Corey's been, uh, involved at UConn doing the same kind of thing, uh, feeling out where the best place at the UConn administration is to to, uh, to work on this. So hopefully something will come of it soon. All right. Any other business? No. 
then I had down here in the membership, you know, I don't know if we should go back to the committee on committees, but we're always trying to get a quorum because there's only one council member comes and only one planning and zoning person comes. So what we were talking about, or I don't remember if we talked about, it was just my brain idea, harebrained ideas, see if we couldn't eliminate one of each of those representatives so that we only had seven on the committee instead of nine, one from the council and one from the planning and zoning commission. So then we, we wouldn't have a, a problem getting a, a quorum all the time. So what do people think about that? <laughs> Makes it tough on the council because then they have to pick, you know, the way it is now they can say, okay, you Democrat, you Republican, you know, they don't have to play favorites. So if it's, um, if there's only one, then they have to pick somebody who's, who's actually interested in doing it. <laughs> well, there might be a way to say it doesn't that that they they are voting members that don't count against quorum. Like there's there could be language like that. So um, you can appoint two of them, and if they're here, they're voting members. But if they're not there, they don't count against quorum. Wow, that's a great idea. I've never heard of that. That sounds wonderful. Did you just make it up, or or you know about this? <laughs> I mean, so well, I, I don't know what, so Robert's rules, you know, I, I've had some experience playing with it, but I don't know if there's something against that at, at the town, right? Because the town has their own rules, but there is a way, like your quorum is whatever you set it as. And there's a way that you can have someone be a member, um, but they can sort of abstain from the meeting or something by not showing up, they abstain from the meeting and then essentially don't count against quorum. Okay. John, have you ever heard anything about the, you know, I mean, I feel like you know the rules a little bit. Do you know if there's anything that would preclude, okay. preclude that? <laughs> I'm familiar with it, but I'm not sure if, if the town would be supportive of it, but that I think it's a great idea because they don't come to the meeting. So by, uh, by not being here, they're showing they don't care. So right. Well, I mean, they're busy and whatever, but, but abstaining, I mean, other, you can also have ways of, I mean, one way that we've done it in at the university is if we have a voting issue, we can discuss it and conduct a vote and anybody who's not there can vote via email afterwards or something. And then you can get to quorum in terms of the number of votes, even if somebody's not in physically present in the meeting. Um, Cause I see it would be difficult as 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 you were saying, Lon, to, to pick one person, but it's like, if, if you're not there, then you're not there and you're not voting, but you don't necessarily count against quorum. So then quorum can be defined um, just in terms of the citizen members and, or something. I mean, like I said, I don't know what, if the if this town council that's, rules would allow you idea. to define let's, quorum uh, in that way. Let's move on that. I'll, I'll talk to the town clerk, you know, cause she, she is involved in that and uh, see if there's some suggestions that we could then uh, bring to the council to talk about because I, you know, that it probably doesn't just affect our committee. It might affect a whole bunch of other. So we have to we have to let them all weigh in on that. So that's good. So I'll put in the notes that we're going to explore, uh, you know, floating quorums depending on uh, how uh, the town clerk and the council react to that. So that's a great suggestion. Thank you. All right. The next meeting, according to my notes, would be the second Thursday of the first of the third quarter, which would be July 13th. That's correct. Now I have a little bit of an interesting drama on that one. I have to drop off my daughter at Logan Airport on the 13th. She has a like a six o'clock flight. So if I drop her off at three, I should be able to get back here in time for the meeting. Well, we got timeline. We can always move it to. I mean, somebody had, we may find out we don't have a quorum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or you can move that we can go seven. 
Well, we could even make it six thirty. Six thirty. If so, we'll 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 work on that, and I'll you know see if the flight changes or whatever, because it's not a it's not a problem for me to get back in three hours, but it might be with traffic and everything. I might need another half an hour. Yes. No, we don't want you to rush. All right. Well, uh, Christine, talking about this uh, proxy voting or the. Proxy voting. Well, she was saying that they could vote later. Yeah, or uh, you know, in a lot of large scale voting, that's what how they do. Yeah, they do proxy voting. Proxy voting. Yeah. Yeah, which means you pick somebody to represent you in your vote. No, you say well, yeah, you can do that, or you can send out uh, voting uh, in the email. Kind of like an absentee ballot, absentee. but you okay. designate someone to carry it for you. That's what the proxy vote is. Well, uh, I I uh, invest on Wall Street, so all the companies I have, I get the proxy vote on the email, and I have to just click on the email that. Mm -hmm. Right. Is. Well, I'll ask the town clerk about that too. Then yeah. see if there's a way around this quorum problem. All right, any other business? If not, thank you for taking this lovely day to spend, spend on these matters. And uh, we'll adjourn at seven o'clock. <laughs>